This is Marvel Universe 3 and 3 quarter inch Greatest Battle Comic 2 Pack, Gambit and Mr. Sinister. These two figures are awesome. They are great figures. You might have a hard time finding them though. I think these are going to be the most in demand. This will be the most in demand pack of this newest uh, two pack wave, um, followed by Daredevil Bullseye, another awesome two set of figures. Anyway, we'll get on to how great they are in a minute. First, let's look at the package. I really like the two pack packaging. It's got an awesome picture of them right there. Look at that picture. It's that's great. <clears throat> Then on the back, we got uh, the comic that it comes with, picture of the two figures, small bio, and then the other two, uh, two packs in the wave. This one is also great. That one's going to be hard to find as well. And then you got Thanos and Adam Warlock. Warlock. I don't think those are going to be too hard to get. Oh, and just so you know, you can get the X-Force Archangel if you buy this and then send this little voucher in. When you order, uh, when you subscribe for Marvel Digital Comics Unlimited, I did that, and the figure is awesome. And having all those comics online, just to read whenever you want, is great too. Here's the comic that it comes with. Um, this cover is actually from when they, well, not really a reboot, but when they made this. Just they had the, they had the Uncanny X Men since the '60s, and they came out with this, just plain X Men title in '91, like, I think. <clears throat> this is one of the first comics I ever bought. Anyway, this is just a cover. I don't know why they used it, because it's got Gambit on it, but there's no Sinister, and these three people aren't involved in this pack. But you open it up, and it's actually a copy of uh, X-Men Origins Gambit one-shot. <clears throat> these X-Men Origins things, there is one-issue comics with a, just a slight story, a small story about how they came to be. Basically, Gamb Gambit's uh, powers, he can't control them because they're too powerful. <clears throat> so he goes to Sinister, him being a master geneticist. And he, uh, he asks him to help him. And he, what he does is he reduces his powers, so giving him more control. And then Sinister asks him a favor. And he has to, Gambit has to go around and assemble a group of mutants. And he, Sinister calls them the Marauders. <clears throat> and then Gambit has to uh, lead him down into the uh, Morlock Tunnels. And the Marauders, including Sabretooth, end up like uh, there's a massacre and he killed all the Marauders. And then Gambit tries to fight him back, but you know, obviously it doesn't end too well for him. And then Gambit goes on, he goes on to be, you know, he, he really wants to make up for what he did. And he starts, uh, I, guess, I guess, saving people in trouble. And one person he ends up saving is Storm. And yada, yada, yada. That's how he becomes part of the X Men. Anyway. Onto the figures. These two figures, like I said, are great. We're gonna start with Gambit here. He is just a repaint of uh, the X Men Origins Gambit, but I think he's he's so much better than that. And I think just how how improved he is, it's worth getting another one. <clears throat> anyway, his accessories. Oh, they don't come with display stands. The two packs never come with display stands. Accessories. He comes with his pipe. Um, I believe it's the same mold from the uh, X-Men Origins one, but from what I understand, that one's a really soft plastic. This one's it's very stiff. I mean, you can still bend it, but it takes a little bit. Of, takes a little bit of muscle. And he comes with no cards. That's right. He doesn't come with any throwing cards or playing cards that he throws. Um, the X-Men Origins one came with them, I believe, but he comes with none. This guy's great. All right, so oops. So overall, look. <clears throat> he looks cool. He looks like Gambit. Um, as far as I know, the head mold is different from that X Men Origins one, but his face, it's 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 great. I mean, it just looks. He's got a smirk on his face. You know, but he looks dangerous at the same time. You don't trust him. So overall, look. I mean, he he's got a Gambit feel to him. He really does. Alright, onto the mold. Like I said before, he is just a, a repaint of that X-Men Origins mold. But I really like it. I really like the mold. I mean his duster is is killer. It's uh I prefer a molded duster rather than 
you know, like a soft goods one, because it wouldn't ju it just doesn't fall right. The only downside is it impedes his articulation a lot. At least they made it flowing down at the bottom so uh, his legs can move. And then <clears throat> I also like the scarf they gave him. It's really cool. I mean, he, he wears that in the X-Men Origins uh, comic. Okay. And his head mold is it's great. Look at that. I believe it's a different mold again. Um, his hair is, is, is great. Look at that. And then let's give you a little closer look at the jacket. I mean, the detail in it is great. I mean, all those waves and folding lines in it, it's, I mean, it's wonderful. It's phenomenal. Look at that. This part of the duster is removable, but his arms, that's part of his, that's part of the mold. So if you were to take it off, he would still have, you know, leather arms, I guess. His armor here, I mean, it's, look at that, it's great. It's really nice, finely detailed. And then you got his legs, pretty muscular. And his boots, his boots are great, look at that. I think the boots was, of uh, the X-Men Origins one, the boots just weren't that impressive. I mean, the paint on them, it's the same mold, but the paint looks so much better on this one. Speaking of paint, let's move on to the paint app. The paint app is great. That's what, that's what improves this figure so much from the X-Men Origins one, is the quality of the paint. <clears throat> the detail in the jacket is, I mean, it's, it's, it's really exceptional, it is. Look at that, it's like this muddy brown, and then it has a lot, you know, it has darker shades in it and stuff around the creases and folds. And this looks like a little, I guess, scuff marks he's got on him. His, uh, his body armor, the pink body armor there, it's, you know, it's a pink color with a little bit of a metallic look to it. It's, I guess it's like a semi-gloss. The detail on his legs is great too, look at that. I think that's supposed to be armor as well. That's what Gambit's weird costume is. It's, it's body armor. Since, you know, he doesn't have any healing factors or he's not in invincible or anything like that. And then his boots are... His boots are great. Look at that. Nice silver color with some shading in there. I mean, it really looks, it really looks metal. And then his gloves are decent as well. But the face... It is a flawless face. Look at that. I mean, his eyebrows are perfect. His little half mask thing is perfect. And his red, his red, his red pupils. I mean, there's not, I mean, it's perfectly drawn in there. And then that paint application on his hair is wonderful too. Look at that. Nice brown with black shading in there. The paint app is phenomenal on this character. That, on this figure, that's what makes it so great. All right, on to the articulation. The articulation isn't the best. I've come to expect more from uh, Marvel Universe figures, and again, it, it's Hasbro could have made a really great Gambit if they just decided to do a new mold, but Hasbro, being that cheap clowns that they are, just use the same one. So the articulation is not that great, and the coat impedes it a lot. So his head's on a swivel, it can rotate 360. It could rotate 360 if the jacket was off. He's got a ball, I guess this is a ball, ball hinge shoulders. It rotates 360s, goes in and out. He's got uh, ball hinge elbows, rotates 360, and moves, goes in and out like that. No articulation in the wrists. He's got a ball hinge. Is that a ball hinge or is it a swivel? I guess it's just a swivel. Well, whatever it does, it just rotates 360 if the jacket was off. I mean, he's got the, the ball ball or ball hinge uh, legs. They rotate 360 and go in and out. And then part of that is it has a little 
well, you know what this is. The thigh can also rotate 360. And then double hinged knees <clears throat> that bend at two points, and then no articulation in the feet. Again, the articulation is the only drawback to this character, I think. Okay, let's get him back on here and do a size comparison. He's kind of short. He is pretty dang short figure. I'll put him next to a Marvel U one. We'll put him next to a sub submariner or namer, whatever you want to call him. If you just look at the head, it's a lot shorter. No. Here he is next to Sunfire. I mean, he's even shorter than him. And this is a really short figure from MU. Um, here he is by Deadpool. He's about the same height as Deadpool. Even though this is from the MU line, and the other the other Deadpool, the X Force one, is from is a repaint of the X uh, X Men Origins Wolverine, and it's even taller than this one. So I mean, he's a short he's a short figure. And if you don't have any um, MU, here he is next to Pre Vizsla from the Clone Wars line, and he's about the same height as him, maybe a little taller. Eh, here he is next to a G.I. Joe, about the same height. So I really like this guy, I was waiting for a Gambit for a long time, and even though it's just a repaint and they could have done better, I'm very happy with it. Okay, now on to Sinister. He is, he is also, he's just a sick figure. He is really cool. The overall look of him, I mean, he looks like Sinister, he does. I mean, he has a sinister look to him. And he, I mean, he's, he's mean looking, he looks scary. But he looks calculating at the same time. I mean, look at that sinister face. And, I mean, and he's tall. He's big. He's the same mold as a uh, Colossus. <clears throat> so I mean, he looks. He looks formidable. He looks impressive. Speaking of the mold, uh, actually, let's get to his cape first. It's an accessory, but I consider it part of the mold. The cape is. The cape is nice. <clears throat> this is a hard cape to get down too. I mean, it. Look at it. It's two toned. And it's in these little pieces. Sinister's cape always kind of flows outward. And he's got this huge collar, which is, I mean, I really like the cape. I was really wary about how the cape was going to be. But it's really good. Cause, I mean, it's relatively pliable, and it doesn't unpay his articulation that much. Okay, onto the mold. Like I said, it's the same Colossus mold. <clears throat> they just added uh, shoulder pads. Um a belt, and then of course the head's different. And I mean, he has these boots, which Astonishing Colossus doesn't have, but the giant size Colossus does have. So it's pretty much the same mold. But it's a nice mold, it works well for him. I mean, Sinister's costume does have that, uh, I guess, lining to it, or pieces. So the mold, I'm very happy with the mold. Um, and, it, and again, it's just such a great figure overall, that it being repaint doesn't uh, bother me too much. I would have preferred a nicer, <clears throat> I mean, a different one, just to have it different, because there's nothing wrong with this mold at all. Just because I, I like to have different molds. Just repaints just, oh, they annoy me. <clears throat> all right, paint app. The paint app on this one, like Gambit, is phenomenal. I mean, it is an exceptionally flawless paint app. Let's look at the capes paint up first. It's, uh, it's uh, the same color as his body. It's a suit. <clears throat> it's this nice deep blue, almost, I guess, a midnight blue, almost black color with lots of nice uh, metallic flecks in it. And the inside is kind of a, it's, it's a little muted, but it still has a little bit of teeny flecks in it. Okay. His body 
It's, it's the same as the cape. It's this nice deep blue, and it, it has different tones in it and stuff. It's very subtle. And it, it, it's really great. It's really nice. His belt buckle's that red. It's all pretty much one color, I think, but it still looks very nice. And then his head, his face, is like Gambit. I mean, it's flawless. His eyes are perfect. His hair is great. He's got that sinister, that blockhead sinister hair. And his lips and his little uh, soul patch thing. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great figure. The paint app is phenomenal. It's got a little bit of a glossy shine to it. Articulation. It's the same as Colossus. Oh, the, because of this stupid uh, joint that they have, it's that G.I. Joe joint that they use, but it's not a metal peg, it's a plastic one, so it comes off very easily. Any any MU figure that has this joint, that always does that. But, I mean, it goes back on easily and stuff. Okay. Articulation. He's got a ball hinge head, so it rotates 360, and then it moves up and down. <clears throat> He's got a ball, ball jointed, ball hinge uh, shoulder, rotates 360s, in and out. Swivel, bicep, so it rotates 360, single hinge, elbow. A swivel wrist that rotates 360. He's got a ball hinge, um, torso or chest that rotates 360. He goes up and down. Again, you saw the ball, the ball jointed hip, swivel with the thigh, rotates 360. Double hinge knee with bends at two points, and then a ball hinge foot, so it rotates 360 and then goes in and out. Be very careful with this because it might break. I feel like it might break. You probably have to boil it out to do that. And his articulation. I mean, he can get in some really dynamic poses. And his cape doesn't really, I mean, you saw that pose I had him before, his cape doesn't really uh, get too much, in, get too in the way of that. Now let's do a size comparison before I put him away. See, there's that thing called him off again. Don't let that deter you. Don't let that deter you at all. And uh, there's a way you can make that tighter with uh, super glue. And it, you know, it doesn't glue it together, but I might put a video up how to do that. Here he is next to Colossus. Same size, of course. He's a bigger character, so I'll put him next to Cable. He's a little even taller than Cable. Cable's a tall, tall figure. <clears throat> now I'll put him next to, uh, let's see. Put him next to Deadpool. So you can see, I mean, he just towers over him. And if you don't have any MU, MU figures, I will put him next to Storm Shadow from the Pursuit of Cobra line. He's a lot taller than him as well. All right, so should you get this figure, or these figures, yes, I highly recommend them. I like these guys a lot. You should make it a priority. Make it a top priority, especially if you're an X-Men fan. If you're not an X-Men fan, I don't know. If you really hate the X-Men, don't get it. But if you're, you know, impartial, get it. Because, I mean, they're just great figures as, you know, on their own as figures. <clears throat> if you want to look into getting into uh, toy collecting and you want a good two to start out with, get these ones. I mean, they're great. I really like them. Okay. Upcoming reviews. I'll be moving on to G.I. Joe's next. I'll be having the G.I. Joe Renegade Storm Shadow. Law and Order, Tunnel Rat, Ripcord, Scarlet, Cobra Trooper, Airtight, uh, Techno Viper, Zombie Viper, Sci-Fi. I want a lot of ones coming up. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you found it helpful. If you were on the fence about getting these two because they're both just repaints, I get them. I highly recommend them. I really do. So anyway, until next time. Keep collecting.